Hi, fellow traders. What's happening? I didn't get to do a recap yesterday, but I will do it today. I got everything in place. I had to do some extra long reflection, and I was really tired at the end of the night, but you'll see why in a minute. So just hang tight, and we will get there. But I got a question for you. Really, I got a question that you need to ask any and everybody that comes at you about trading and you know they're sitting here talking about how much money you can make or you can make this amount of money and all you got to do is follow this process and all of that ask them what's on side b now i don't i got pictures of records up here and the records were kind of phasing out when i was coming along I came along at the end of the the vinyl and we were getting into the cassette tapes and all of that. But on these records, you know, you had the album that had I don't know how many songs, maybe five on one the eight on one side, five to eight on the other. But before the albums came out, the record companies wanted to make money off individual songs. So the most popular songs they would put on the um side a side a would be the song that everybody liked that everybody was familiar with and then some they would just throw whatever on side b and most people never really played side b they only played side a but they did that they never put two really good songs on the front and the back and i understand why they did that because they were able to sell more records. It's a, it's a marketing thing. And it's the same way when somebody, not just trading, but anything. When somebody's trying to sell you something and they're making it sound so good and you're like, hey, that's great. But what's on side B? Side B is where the struggle is. It's where the pain is. It's where the hard work is in order to get to where you want to be. But nobody's going to sell you that because who the hell wants to buy that? You know, you want to buy, you want to be, you know, make $100,000. You want to make a million dollars. And somebody, you know, tells you, hey, I got this strategy. I got this process. It's like if I come to you and I say, I've got my roadmap to success. You know, you can make, a hundred thousand dollars in a year if you follow this process and everything but that's all i tell you and i don't share with you the frustrating days that you're gonna have the ups and downs that you're gonna go through the struggles and the stress that you're gonna have to go through in order to be a successful trader everybody has to go through it i don't give a damn who you are and i guarantee you everybody that's out there, including me, I, we're going to tell you what we had to go through, that we had to go through some stuff. Everybody's going to tell you they had to go through, they suffered through their losing times and all of that. But what we're trying to help you with, what we're giving you is not going to stop you or prevent you from experiencing that because you have to experience it in order to grow. If you don't experience any trials and tribulations in this, you don't experience the stress, you're not going to grow and you're not going to be profitable. And so you're going to have to go through it. And that's what I do every day. Every day for me is about side B. You're seeing what side B of trading is. And it's not side A that's going to break you. It's going to be side B. That's what's going to break you. It's going to break you down. But if you don't quit, you don't give up, and you keep grinding, you're going to be the side. You're going to turn that side B into a side A. And you're never going to want to flip it over again. So it's just a matter of doing the things that you need to do. Always look for what's happening on side B. Don't get caught up. You know, side A is, is going to sound good. It's going to make you feel good. It's going to have you all pumped up. 
but it's not going to help you get through the hard times. It's not going to teach you what you need to do to survive in this industry. So always, always look at side B. Ask about side B because there definitely is one. All right, so tomorrow I'm going to be live streaming. It, it may be really slow. It's been slow the last couple of weeks, but good opportunity for you to ask questions about what I do, about the strategies, anything. You know, I'll be there. We're going to go through, build my watch list, and just kind of analyze things that's going on. But I'm there. Uh, you'll see exactly what it's like to um, come in the community. It's really active in the morning, but like I say, after 11 o'clock, it's pretty dead. There's not a whole lot going on right now. Now, when earnings season kicks in next week, it start, It should pick up. We should have some volume, some volatility, and a little bit more action throughout the day. But now come and join me. If you're not a member, come and join me right here on my YouTube channel. And uh, check us out. All right, so yesterday, awesome trade, awesome start yesterday. Um, PEP, this was on earnings. Now, I did trade this on a three-minute opening range, and this is one of the rare occasions that a three-minute will give me a, a worse entry than a five-minute could. On the, This is the five-minute candle. If I had waited for the five minute candle, I could have got in risking off of this body here. And I would have gotten a lot better entry. So this is just a rare occurrence. It doesn't always happen. But in this case, it just, it just seems like yesterday was a day of everything just being off and, and not really being 100% there. But still a good entry and was able to, to take profit here. Here we came within um, two cents of my tick, my order. Two cents. It didn't, and it never came back and allowed me to be able to manually take profit. You know, I had a limit order out at 131.35. I think it made a low of 36 or seven and never hit it, never came back. Ended up having to stop out at break even, but I didn't let it make me mad, anything like that. I waited, got in under the nine. You know, yeah, I could have got in here, but I have a rule where I do not short into support. And I'm not going to break that rule for anything. So I waited until we broke through, went back and tested it. And then I got in when it started to show weakness. This thing bounced again and retested which typically we see happen. It's just flushing out the wheat is basically what it is. You guys that are watching your PL, this move here would have stopped you out before the big move came. And then you would have been f fussing about why does the market always stop me out? Well, we talked about that today in, in the um, roadmap to success class that we had today. And we talked about exactly why that happens and how to avoid this. But, you know, this was not going to shake me out. I'm a little bit beyond that now. And we came down, hit this target. But this time I put it at 40. <laughs> I didn't put it. So I, I didn't put it at 35. I put it at 40 this time. And just so happens, it just blew through it and came on down to like, 131.15 but you know it is it is what it is I, i'm cool with that and then we got the bounce here kept rejecting off the nine and that's what we do we ride the nine down here i was going to take um another piece off we were halfway between the two levels so it was and we were running into some support here so I was like, I might as well take half off here just in case. I could always add if we come back and reject off of this. I can always add some more to it. 
but accidentally took it all off instead of taking half off. Um, but that was just a, a little mental error, but, you know, we got, I, I got the meter to move. Uh, we locked in some really nice profit on this. And look, we're only, we're trading small size. Okay, we're only trading 300 shares of this. And, you know, we're making money on small size. This is how you grow your account. This is what I'm trying to teach you guys. You can grow your account trading small size. You just have to be patient and allow these trades to work. And you see some days I'm not patient and you see what happens. So some more of that side B mess. So really good job on PEP. Um, Levi, L-E-V-I, this was an earnings trade yesterday and everything worked perfect until I guess I need glasses. I know I need glasses, but I this did come down close to 2250. I was watching the level two and I saw the um I saw on the on the um ask that we were at 2250. At least I thought that's what I saw. It was actually at 2350. And so I ended up covering it at 2350 when I should have been covering it here. And I messed that up, cost me a nice chunk of change on this. But it's just me not being able to see very well. And I can't blame it on anybody but me, but that's what happened here. Um, I didn't take half off. You know, I don't spook out on half. If I'm going to spook out, I'm taking it all off. But that was an accident there. And so I had to hold it a little bit beyond um, 2250. I had to go down around 2225 uh, to take another piece off. And was trying to hold for the break. There was another level around 20. I think it was 2034 or something like a 2035, but we couldn't get it. And, you know, I had to, had to go ahead and close it out. I had to, to take off anyway. I couldn't hang around, but really nice trade here. Now I'm purposely leaving Roku for last. This is where the trouble came. And this is where the reflection took a long time because, you know, Really, what I should have done yesterday was, after the market, was go grab a donkey head and stand in the corner. Now, that's exactly what I needed to do. But we'll look at Roku here in a minute. But end of the day, uh, green, 2465, just imagine if I had not messed with this. There was no reason for me to trade this at all. Had no reason to trade it. But greed, man, greed. It, it kills you. It gets in your head. And man. But we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so today we traded Levi out of the gate. Uh, three minute opening range again. That's why we're up. But it was pretty close to the five minute candle today. Um, got in it. Got the first cover. Could not get it down to get the second cover. It bounced on me and um, had to, to take it off. And it just never really worked itself out. I mean, this one, you really needed some size. I, I could have traded a, a thousand shares on this, but that's not, that's just not me. Uh, I like to, to trade 500 shares on this. If we get a point, point and a half, that's really good profit. Really good profit. And it's pretty much what most people can trade. If you're trading real money, you know, you, you're probably going to be relegated to trading three to 500 shares of this. And you know, not a bad trade. I mean, I was pretty, pretty happy with it. I was really upset that we didn't get to sell off and it just looked like it slowed down. 
it just really slowed down for me and didn't really give me what I was looking for. So I didn't get back in it. The price action just didn't look good. And I made the right decision because we never did come back down toward this. So I read the price action right on this and was pretty pleased with it. Pretty pleased with, with that trade. Um, BBBY, this is an earnings trade. I'm actually still in this. I tried to close this thing <laughs> right at um, 17.59, but it, the order just sat there and sat there and sat there. So I'm um, just waiting for them to get that cleared up for me. But um, this didn't work out as well. And I didn't think this was going to gap any that much. It Historically, this thing did not gap. But I was expecting this because I expected the earning, I mean, the uh, guidance to be bad. And the guidance was bad. It did have a pretty good beat on earnings per share. But that's not what makes the stock move or sustains the stock. It's the guidance. It's where is the stock going to be value-wise six months from now, eight months from now? Where is it going to be? That's what I'm looking at. And that's what I'm trading off of. And that's what big money's trading off of. Okay, that's what they're looking for. It's our job to figure out what the big guys are doing and follow them. Because if we're opposite them, our money is going into their account. And that's not what I want. So they're looking at guidance. That's what determines what a stock does. And this started popping up early. I think there were just a lot of people really wanting this to go long. And you could see the price action was just crazy. And it never tested my threshold on this so and it came came on back i was looking for it to come down to 10 it may get there tomorrow i fully expect this to sell off tomorrow unless some other news comes out or something like that i honestly expect this to sell off um so now now i do don't even ask me to explain this okay i spent hours last night trying to justify the only thing that made that i traded here was a trend continuation i thought we you know we kind of failed at 200 thought we were coming in um probably break 100 get down to 98 98.50, somewhere in there. It didn't. This thing is like clockwork. As soon as I got in, the damn thing got bought up. And it just kept going. Now, I should have stopped out here when we claimed the, the 20, but it moved up so quick. You know, I just kind of hung on to it for a second and took it off here. So that was fine. I, I That was managed pretty well. But oh no, I wait until we get all the way up here. We pull back and we hold green. And I'm thinking we're going to hit 105. I've been looking for 105 for two days now. And ironically, it hit it today and I still lost money on it. But it, it's just no, I, I can't even explain it. Okay, this is inexplicable. So I, I had a long talk with myself and just, I, I was just trying to be greedy and trying to chase the money. So now today I say, I'm not going to jump on it early. I'm going to wait. I'm going to give it time to work itself out. And I get the rejection here. We come down, we make a higher low. And in my infinite wisdom, I stop out and I go long. And I'm buying into red to green. I'm buying into the hundred. 
to the 50. I'm buying into all of this. And could have taken some profit up here. I could have made some money on this move up here. But I didn't. I'm still waiting on this. So we bounce. We pull back. And I think we're going to go higher. We end up making a lower high. This starts to sell off. I should have dumped it. Um, I could have dumped it up here. But I held on to it a little bit too long. And I'm like, ugh. What the hell? What are you doing, man? What are you doing? Makes absolutely no sense. None whatsoever. So, I'm in trader rehab now. I'm in Roku trader rehab. The only reason I'm chasing this is because I've made a ton of money on this. This thing has given me you know, through two, three point moves intraday when everything else is slow, it moves real good on low volume. But, and I just said to myself last night, stop messing with this. Just let it go. You know, you got, you got beat up yesterday. Let it go. But no, I had to mess with Roku again and it burned me again. So just on Roku alone, just on Roku alone, I almost lost 800 bucks. You know, I've made money on the other stocks, but just one stock to lose $800 on is unexcusable. It's inexcusable. So I'm in trader rehab right now. You know, that means I drink as much as I can, as quick as I can, and then go to sleep. That's what trader rehab is. And we'll come back, and then we forget about it, and we come back tomorrow and make it happen. Um, but I, I got this out of my system. Because uh, I, I just shut it off. I cut it off and, and just stopped. You know, it was just a matter of, hey, just, just leave it alone. Just leave the damn thing alone. There's no need to. No need to, to. You know, hurt yourself anymore. Just, just leave it alone. And so, that's why I, I said, yeah, I live inside B every day. This is real, and I don't care how good you are. Every now and then. Or how long you've been trading, every now and then you're going to get hooked up with one stock that's going to just test every ounce of whatever you have inside of you that's good. It's going to test it. Now, I, this, this isn't the first time. You know, some of you guys has been hanging with me long enough. You know, X was one um, several years ago. Uh, SQ was another one. So, you know, hey, we we dealt with it, and now it's, it's time to pack up, pick up stuff, and 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 roll along. The only good thing is, I managed my risk. I didn't let this get out of hand, and end up losing twelve hundred dollars on it in one day. You know, so managing the risk was was key because I've got two good days and there's a good possibility that I'm gonna I can finish with a really good week. And so just have to make sure I put this behind me and if this damn thing is on my scanner in the morning, I'm cutting the scanner off. I'm not gonna even look at the scanner. We'll have to do it the old-fashioned way. So that's going to do it for me today. Um, remember, guys, always ask for side B. Always. 
don't fall for side A. Don't just because it sounds good, it looks good, it's pleasing to you. That's not what's going to break you. It's the side B is going to break you. So you need to know what you're going up against before you get going. So you guys have a great night, a great evening, and I will catch you tomorrow.